Good morning, good morning. You are journey with Erica. So we are going to be talking about Colossians 3 this morning, but let's go ahead and get started with the prayer for this morning. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the day that we have never seen before, but we know that your glory will still get the upper hand, God. Whatever situation may come and arise in our life, God, we will know what tools to use because God, you already said in your word that you will be there for us, never leave us, nor forsake us. So God, we say thank you. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for allowing us to understand your word to do right and do better in this world right now, God. So God, whatever situation that we are in right now, that we're currently in right now, God, we ask for a comforter. We ask for guidance we ask for whatever word we have today that somehow that word we're able to penetrate within our heart and to break down strongholds and give us strength when we're weak god that we will understand more and more how to move throughout this day god so god we say thank you right now thank you for it right now god and lord please decrease of erica so that erica do not get the glory at any time but you will always get the glory you will always get the shine you will always get the light upon you god so we'll always Always come right back to you. So Lord, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Alrighty. So Colossians 3. So we have a lot to talk about in this two verse. Um, and then the chapter itself is a lot to tackle also. So the very first thing, Colossians 3, the 23rd verse. I'm reading New Living Translation today. And it simply says, Work willingly at whatever you do. I'm going to stop there. So work willingly at whatever you do. So I don't know what your career is. I don't know what your job is. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what you're doing. Um, but whatever you do, you're working willingly. As though you was working for the Lord rather than for people. Mm. The first thing I read, well, the first thing I thought when I, I, I read that was people pleasing is not a business. Okay. So, but there, 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 it happens, you know, people go to work and they please other people. They please their bosses. They please the supervisor. They please people that look at them of how they work. But God is saying, no, whatever you do, he doesn't matter if it's a high office to a low office, if it's high behind the counter or, you know, you're not even being seen. He said, whatever you do, even if you're self-employed, whatever you do, do whatever you do. As if you're working for the Lord rather than for people. So people may say, or we may say, well, how is that possible? We are working for the people. It's a mindset. All right. It's a mindset. Last week, we talked about a little bit briefly about purpose and mission. And I say to you right now, if you do not know what your purpose is in this life, you and God can only have that conversation. You and God, you have to pray to God for God to show you your purpose in this world. Um, I always thought of it as my purpose, regardless of what it is, my purpose is always to glorify God. Now, how do I glorify God? My, I, I consider that to be my mission. My mission at the end of the day, every single day of my life, what do I have a mission? What's my goal? My goal is to always reach the kids teach the kids and allow them to understand that they are more than what people say they are, you know, but in the back of my mind, I'm praying over these kids. I'm interceding for these kids. Um, they have concerns and issues and whatever they're going through, but at the end of the day, I want God to get the glory. And, um, so, so that's that. That would be my purpose. My purpose is to make sure that I teach in order to glorify God. Whenever there's an award come, I'm going to say, no, I couldn't have did this without God. God's the one that woke me up every single morning to go to work and to teach these kids. Uh, when they was fighting, I, I had to pray over them for them to stop. You know, when things was going wrong and outside and violence was everywhere around me, I had to constantly pray for this school and make sure these school the school is going to be safe. You know, 
that is my purpose. That is what I do. I do that for me, for God to get glorified. You know, Erica don't do anything. Erica don't sit behind no desk. Erica don't do anything by herself. God give me the strength, the breath, the intelligence, everything that I need to accomplish any type of goal. God did it. God pushed me through school. God pushed me to get a job. God pushed me to the job to get to teach. So people can say, oh, well, I taught you that. I, I taught you that. I taught you how to be a good teacher. No, no, you did not. You you actually told me, okay, do it this way. But at the end of the day, it's a mindset. My mindset is always focused on God. I wonder what what today will I have to accomplish? You know, I would go into class and it, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a different feeling when you know God is in it. Because I can be having so many issues that I left with the day before with some child and parent or whatever. And then when I get into that school, I'm still having issues. But as soon as 8.05, 8.15, those kids start walking in that classroom. It's like, oh, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? You know, it, I switch on because my focus is how I'm going to protect these kids. How am I going to teach these kids? What is today that's going to happen? Some days in it bad, some days in it great. But at the end of the day, I always felt God's presence. God had to remind me what I needed to say. God had to remind me how I needed to behave. God had to remind me. So when this is God's job, this is God's getting the glory. Erica has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm here because of what God wanted me to do. And God is getting the glory out of it. So then it says, um, what it say? Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as a reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Another way of thinking of this is, um, even though Erica... Even though Erica is in front of the classroom, when people see me, yeah, they see Erica. Oh, that's Miss Miss Erica right there. But the things and how I move, how I talk to these people, eventually they see a side, oh, Miss Erica won't do that. Mm -mm, she won't talk back to us. Mm -mm, she won't call us out of name. You said Miss Erica. Mm -mm, Miss Erica didn't do that. Miss Erica ain't even like that. You know, the kids will vouch for you. The adults will vouch for you. That's not of Erica. But really what they're saying, that's not of God. God's not going to allow Erica to do that. Because Erica has God within her. Erica walk up and down these halls because God is protecting her. You know, and that's the blessing about starting the school year off. You know, I will go and say, okay, this person's next to me. God bless this child, bless this chair, bless this chair, bless this chair. You know, you put God in it. You, you take God to work. Put it like that. You take God to work and allow God to be who he wants to be. Not what you want to be. Because if everybody start praise dancing in that, in that workplace, then okay, then that's what God wants to do. You know, but God is in it. You are, you got God in you and you are taking God with you to work. God drives with you every single day to work. God's do whatever you have to do. Go to the grocery store, whatever. God is in it. And when people look at you, that's the whole point. When people look at you, whatever you do, they're going to realize that is not just a mere human being. That is a human being that has a godly effect on her. She's not going to talk a certain way because that's how God wants her to be. She's not going to curse you out when you make her mad. That's how God wants her to be. You're not going to wave your hand and puff and hum puff because somebody made you mad. That's not how God wants her to be. So when God is in it. Whatever you do, you are going to shine a light around people and around yourself that people are going to know the spirit. They're going to know the spirit and they're going to see that is the spirit of God. You have an excellence. You have an appearance. You have, um, you just have a glow of godliness around you. 
And so that what it, that is what it really means when whatever you do, make sure that you are working for the Lord rather than for people. You're not bringing people to elevate them. You're elevating God. You're giving God the glory of what's going to happen for that day, what's going to happen at that word, what award that you're going to get. Because there's no better award than the Jesus Christ award. And that Jesus Christ award just simply says you're going to have a home eternally in heaven. That's the reward that we're seeking every single day, whatever we do. And that last verse kind of says something too. It says, um, but if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favors. He has no favors. So if I'm, there's, there's several teachers that go in and do just the horrible things. Principals do the horrible things. God, God sees everything that you do wrong. And trust me, God's going to get you. All right? You go in and be a pastor and you do some horrible things. God's going to get you. He's going to pay you back. You know, you're not a favorite just because you're preaching the word. You know, doctors, you know, doing horrible things. God's going to get you back. You're not a favorite. It, it doesn't matter if you're trying to help heal someone and cure someone, and, you know, and make them better. God's going to get you better because that's not how you play with his word. That's not how you play with him. All right. You make people please. People pleasing is also pleasing yourself too now, right? Well, let's get that right now. People pleasing is also pleasing ourselves. What pleases us? At the end of the day, we're not pleasing ourselves. We're not pleasing other people. We're pleasing God. We're, we're making sure that God is pleased with whatever we do. When that is, when that is the level, then that, that's the level that we got to get on. If you're not there, if you're not waking up every day and say, okay, how can I please God? Or what 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 job do God have me to work on today? Then that you, for one, you're not getting to a goal. For two, well, you're not walking in your purpose, all right? At the end of the day, I wake up every day in the morning, you know, and I want to be able to say, you know what? What does God have for me today to accomplish? What do I need to accomplish, all right? Making sure that right now, God gets the glory every single thing that I do. You know, so that is the word today. That's just three verses. There's a whole lot of other stuff that it talks about um, above, but um, it's a lot to tackle. All right. So right now, I just want to make sure that everybody understand um, that our boss, supervisor, um, leader, team leader, focus leader, whatever it's called <laughs> in your workforce, um, they're there to do a job. And I guarantee you, they have the answer to God too. So if you're leading somebody, if you're supervising someone, then guess what? Are you doing it for people, even yourself? Are you doing it for God? And at the end of the day, even if I say, oh, that leader led me well, she should get an award. At the end of the day, if she's a God-fearing person, or if he's a God-fearing person, then guess what? The same thing applies to that person. And they'll be like, no, I lead by example because God it's leading me. You know, it, it just works like that, you know? If everybody in this world realized that at the end of the day, my name is not going to get the glory. Only God can get the glory. Oh, what a world it would be. It would be a wonderful world. <laughs> it would be a great world where everybody is getting along with everybody. That would be great. Wonderful. But... That's the word for today, and let's go ahead and end with a prayer. Lord, I say thank you right now. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your leading us down a path that we have never seen before today, God. And God, today, God, today and this week, God, we're going to be focusing on always, always doing what you want us to do, God. Letting our will be your will as well, God. 
whatever duty we have set before us this week, God, that in the end, you will always get the glory. You will always get the glory. You're going to be able to help us to understand where, how, where to go, how to walk, how to be, how to live, how to talk, you know, how to stay in, you know, what to say to people, how to respond. Our daily walk is going to be dependent on your word, God. Our daily walk is dependent on you within us, God. And you're going to continue to mold and shape us to be whoever you want us to be, God. So, God, while you do that, we have a job on this earth to continue to do, God. And on this earth, the main and priority is to make sure that you still get the glory whatever we do, God. That when we walk to our workplace, when we go and talk to our customers and talk to our clients and talk to our coworkers, Whenever they hear us, whenever they see us, they can just smell the aroma of God. They can just hear that you are in the presence of our lives, that you're going to they be able to see that your smile is just an angelic smile through us. They see you, God. The eyes shows the window of heaven, God. God, I know we're not perfect and we're going to make mistakes, but at the end of the day, our good will always outweigh our bad, God. And God, we know that you do not have any favorites right now, God. So God, we want to also repent of anything that we have done. If we're not right within you, God, we ask that you change it to, to make us be where and what we need to be, God. That we will continue to live a life according to your will and not our own will, God. We don't want to please ourselves. Well, we probably do, but God, we shouldn't want to please ourselves. We should want to live a life that is pleasing to you and to you only, God. Direct our path and tell us when we're wrong, God. Give us the light that says, Erica, do this, Erica, do that. And you know what, God? We know that when we follow your path, when we follow your lead, God, you always get the glory. And at the end of the day, you always will shine. And God, if that means that the light is shining upon us, we should know very well that that light is not because of us. That light is because of you, God. You live within us. You walk within us. You walk and cover us, God. So God, we say thank you right now, God. And remember, God, anything that's not like us or like you, that's in us, God. We ask you right now, God, to take it out of us and put you more in us, God. Allow this word to fill up that void so that every day this week, God, we wake up and we continue to say, what must I do to please God today, God? That is our anthem for this week and anthem for today. What more should I do to please God? Because, God, you are the only one that we want to please. We don't have any people pleasing business in this world, but God, we want to make sure we please you. You are our number one priority to always glorify you. In Jesus' name, bless the people that have any other situations that was not named or talked about today, God. You know their situation. Go ahead and comfort them and bless them for today, God. Allow them to understand that you will walk in before them, God. You will sit in the chair that they have never sat in before because you are going to bring them upon a place where you're going to be there God. God, you're going to open doors and close doors, but God, we allow you to be the only one to open and close and allow us to understand what is right and what is wrong for us, God. And God, continue to give us that wisdom to know that you continue to have the upper hand about our life, God. That you're going to continue to move us and change us and, and, and mold us and shape us to be who and where you want us to go and be, God. So God, we say thank you. Thank you for whatever situation that you're about to make happen, God. Thank you for the answer, God, because God, you're going to give us the answer that we need for today, God. And so, God, we say thank you now. And anything that I missed and anything that I omitted, God, God, I know that you are still listening and you're still reading our minds and you still know where we want to go with our hearts today, God. So, God, we say thank you for that too. We think that you are going to be in control, God. And we say we give it up to you, God. We give it to you, God, for you to make the right choices for us, God, right now, God, and give us the understanding that you are the priority in our lives and God who is a lot to say but God we don't have the time but we want to continue to say thank you thank you for being who you are God and we love it in Jesus name amen all right people we want to say thank you for listening today and we pray that you have a great day love you